welcome back to Mysteries with Pippa. If you are new to my channel, my name is Pippa and welcome. I do everything from mysterious murders, unsolved murders, and currently right now I am doing a killer kids series. If you are not new to my channel and you see me quite frequently, welcome back, but please do not forget to subscribe down below and don't forget the ding bell if you think this video is for you. So without further ado, let's get straight into the case. This is the case of Mary Bell. Mary Flora Bell was born on the 26th of May 1957 and at the age of 11 she had murdered two toddlers in Newcastle, England. While Mary was growing up in Newcastle she lived in absolutely appalling conditions and it is widely believed that these conditions contributed to her personality and becoming the way that she was. She lived in a really rough, crime-ridden area and her father was a drunk alcoholic who was a very petty criminal who was constantly in and out of prison for robbing shops, robbing supermarkets, stealing money, robbing houses and her mother was a prostitute. Mary's mother, Betty, had given birth to Mary when she was only 17 years old and she had some mental health issues. Betty had initially tried to get Mary adopted but was unsuccessful and when family and friends offered to take Mary off Betty's hands she blatantly refused. She didn't want Mary going to a family that she knew, she just wanted her out. Betty had also tried to kill Mary when she was at the age of one and had plied her with sleeping pearls and had thrown her out of a window and said that it was an accident. Despite all of this, Betty still had full custody of Mary. And at the age of six, something happened to Mary which changed her world forever. Betty had introduced her clients to her own daughter, Mary, and at the age of six, she was sexually assaulted by her mother's clients and was frequently sexually assaulted by them. Her mother had actually gotten her involved within prostitution at such a young age. Straight away, Mary had no chance in life and it's so clear and so easy to see from such a small childhood, such a small time in your life. It has such a huge impact in the whole of your life. At school, Mary was described as intimidating and aggressive and quite a few students below and above her were very, very frightened of her and would do anything that she said. Mary Bell also had a next door neighbour called Norma Bell. The last name is just pure coincidence. They had become great friends. Despite Norma Bell being two years older than Mary Bell, Norma was intellectually weaker than Mary and she had the mental capacity and mental age of a couple of years younger than what she actually was. On the other hand, Mary was quite intellectual, um, she was quite witty and she always had an answer for everything. On Saturday the 11th of May 1968, Mary and Norma took a three-year-old toddler out for some sweets. This toddler had gone missing and was found a few hours later on his own, dazed and confused and very bloody. The next day, a mother phoned the police on Mary Bell as she had witnessed Mary strangling her daughter in a sand pit in a park. Yet, despite these two incidences, and both were reported and both were associated with Mary, nothing was done. Then, on the 25th of May, just two weeks later after the strangulation incident, Martin Brown, a four-year-old boy, was playing outside when he was not seen for many hours. Back in the 1960s and 70s, a very young child playing outside wasn't considered scary and them not being seen for many hours wasn't really a concern for the people of Newcastle. This was classed as the norm and people felt very safe. But then at 5 p.m. Martin Brown's mother had received a frantic door knock it was one of her friends and she had said that Martin had been hurt in a derelict house nearby. Martin Brown's mother rushed absolutely to the house so quickly and had seen 
a kind of commotion and quite a few people surrounding the derelict house and they had brought Martin Brown's body out. She, he was described as being very grey. He was then taken to hospital and pronounced dead on arrival. They couldn't find anything linking Martin Brown to a murder or anything suspicious happening, so they put it down to an accident. A worker had found him while passing the derelict house and no one could explain why he was there, what had caused his death, and so everyone just tried to put it to bed as a freak accident. Then, two days later, a nursery nearby called and said that they had had a break-in. In the break-in, there were some notes skewed across the room that said, I murder so I may come back, and I murdered Martin Brown. The handwriting was a very childish handwriting, and the police just put it down to children, kind of playing some sort of sick joke. They didn't actually believe that Martin Brown had been murdered, and they didn't really think much of it. And unfortunately, that day when Mary went to school, they had all been given journals which they had to write in every morning about something about their day. In this journal they could write whatever they wanted to and Mary decided to write about the murder of Martin Brown, a four year old toddler who had been murdered near her home. She also drew a picture of the scene and she drew the dead body of the toddler and by the toddler was a bottle of pills. There were a bottle of pills found next to the boy but that was never released, no one ever thought anything of it, but somehow Mary Bell knew that these pills were next to the boy. That day after school, Norma and Mary played an absolutely cruel trick on Martin's mum. They had knocked on the door and asked to see Martin. Martin's mum looked bewildered and said, he's dead. And Mary's response was that she knew he was dead, but that she wanted to see his dead body in the coffin. This distorted Martin's mum so much, she closed the door and was in absolute hysterics and a doctor had to be called out to calm her down. Then, all went quiet for a couple of months until the 31st of July, when a three-year-old, Brian Howe, wanted to see a demolition of a house and so he attended it, watching from afar as they bulldozed these houses down. This is where Mary and Norma had been as well and they had spotted him and taken him. He was never seen alive again. He went missing that night and his body was found around about midnight the next day. Light bits of his hair had been cut off and had been strewn around him and there was also scissors nearby that had been used as the tool to cut him. They'd also found some very odd markings on the sides of his legs going downwards in what appeared to be an attempt at scratching initials out. They had also been used with the scissors as well. An autopsy had also been revealed that he had been strangled. Given the similarities in both Brian Howe's case and Martin's Brown case, they decided to reopen Martin Brown's case. And it was then revealed to the public that they were looking for a child as their suspect. Quickly it became clear that Mary Bell was a main suspect. She was the main suspect because she was seen frequently at news conferences and she had this weird, obscure look to her, so they brought her in for questioning. Before they could do this, they attempted to go to the home of Mary Bell and was met with hostility. Her father had refused them entry and her mother had said if they tried to enter that she would set the dog on them. And thankfully, a breakthrough had arrived when a nine-year-old boy who witnessed Brian Howe being murdered came forward. He too was mentally kind of weaker and had a mental age much younger than his actual natural age was. He said that Mary had this weird technique where she would say to the victim of the boy she was going to kill that they had a sore throat and that she was going to make it better. She then proceeded to put her hand around the throat of the child and squeeze tighter and tighter. This gave the police what they needed and they actually managed to bring in both Norma and Mary in for questioning. Mary had denied killing the children, but when she went to court, Mary Bell was convicted for manslaughter under the term of diminished responsibility due to her age of killing both toddlers. 
Norma was acquitted under the pretenses that she was forced by Mary Bell. Then, at the age of 23, she was released from a mental institution that she had been for many years and had been given a new name and a new identity. So her mother, Betty, had frequently tried to sell stories um, about her and there'd been a lot of issues. But Mary now has a husband and has a child and is under a new name and lives somewhere anonymously in the UK and hasn't killed since. It is believed that she had psychopathic tendencies and that this was caused by her lack of a loving and compassion and a lot of neglect in her younger years which I think she's very mournful of now and regrets immensely and now leads a very very normal life. You know you hear cases of this where children kill uh, who have psychopathic tendencies and then they grow up to be absolutely fine after treatment and it is so frightening to hear that a 10 year old or 11 year old even can kill two toddlers. I mean she did release a book and not much, mo not much more is known because of the anonymity that she has but it is just terrifying to hear this. I really did find this case fascinating today. It is the biggest case in the UK. She's one of the youngest children to have murdered someone. And I hope you guys will see me next week for another Mysteries of Pippa case. Hi guys, just a quick side note as well. If you guys would like to know more about me, because I mean, the videos I do are purely case-wise if you guys would like to know more about me maybe how i do my makeup how i do my hair maybe you'd like to hear some paranormal stories about me or some facts about me please do let me know in the comments below and i can make sure i get some more videos out because i would love for you guys to know more about my personality i'm just not sure the best way about going about it so anyway i'm gonna leave it here now folks and hope you have a lovely lovely weekend